Today I want to talk about something near and dear to my heart, which is personality types. Mimi just came up with this amazing bingo theory over the last years, how you can learn to balance your masculine and feminine energy. And the fascinating thing is this helped you build, you and your husband build a business that nets over a million, uh, seven figures. We won't even say yeah. the exact amount, but the point being, you understand what we're talking about right now, the bingo theory, masculine and feminine energy, uh, and how to use it to your advantage and be careful that it doesn't work against you can have tangible benefits, health, wealth, love, and happiness, all the stuff I talk about. I'm very happy you guys came to visit me from London and uh, pay close attention because there's a quiz on your website mm -hmm. and I'm gonna put a link to it where you can actually take a 20 or you know a 10 minute quiz and it'll lay out your strengths, weaknesses, and one of the, when we first met two or three years ago in London, Mimi actually helped me uh, work on balancing out. She says, I remember you said, Ty, you're one of the more masculine guys I've met before. She didn't mean it as, she meant, it, I don't know if it was a compliment, but she had good advice for me on a few things and I've been doing them and uh, thanks for the good advice. Thanks for having me. And now I share it with everybody. Thank you for encouraging me because you were one of the first people I told about the bingo theory and you were very encouraging about going after the book and actually getting the idea out. So thanks for that. I don't know, was I? Yeah, yeah. You know, my <laughs> life is so on the go, sometimes people are like, do you remember saying that? I'm like, but I'm sure if I had heard about this, I, I mean, when I heard, I remember hearing about it being like, this is a good idea. Because what I find, and I have one of my close friends, and we always argue on how important personality tests are, and he's like, they're not that important. And I'm like, BS, they're extremely important. Even Peter Drucker, the, the, the most esteemed, you know, Harvard business, teacher of all time he says if you don't know your strengths uh -huh. you can't build a powerful life I mean this is the foundation know thyself yes Aristotle Socrates yeah. what are some things like for somebody watching we'll get into how you can tell yeah. if you're masculine if you're super masculine like mm -hmm. me what are the things you need to do because I remember what you told me you do yeah that's amazing I want to hear what you remember but basically when you look at the energy I look at it from a very logical point of view. I mean, it's energy, but it's also the way the brain works. So you have the left side, which is logic, and the right side, which is creativity, expression. And, you know, most people will have one side of their brain that's more developed that they use to a bigger capacity. Right. So if you use more of your left side of your brain, so more of your masculine energy, and you're not using it the right side, you will have an imbalance in your life. So basically, how do you balance yourself? You have to find ways to, in your case, that was your feminine energy, you have to find ways to bring out more of that creative side, feminine energy, expressive. Um, I think one of the tips I gave you, if I, if I remember it right, I said that um, you have to just you know, express yourself more through the way that you dress. That right. can be one of the great things. Is Do Yeezys count? These are... They're nice. <laughs> I got fitted clothing. look at the color combination. Fitted clothing, like, light. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Blue. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Blue. So, and you told me salsa, because I yeah, used to do salsa. Dancing. dancing is good. Yeah. Art, music. Yeah. Any, any exercise where you get to express yourself um, creatively yeah. will bring that out of you. So cooking, dancing, um, connecting with people, creating art, any kind of art that could be painting, whatever you enjoy as a person, yeah. really, that could be it. For you itself, because I know you dance. Yeah. And you said that you stopped dancing, and I said, no, you have to, you have to start Go dancing back. again. Go back, because I do a lot of masculine actually, stuff. Mm -hmm. I play basketball as masculine. I know. Jiu-jitsu is exactly. masculine, boxing, Muay Thai. Which just brings out more of right. what you are. Now, let me, let, me, let me ask you this question yeah. on this subject. Um, Peter Drucker, in the book Managing Oneself, which is one of the top books I recommend people read, he says you should build on strengths. Mm -hmm. You can't build on your weaknesses. So if somebody is reading this book yeah. and is playing devil advocate and says, but what about building on your strength? If you're masculine, should you do martial arts? Yeah. Should you do business? Should you be a serial entrepreneur? Or would you say go all the way and just do feminine stuff to balance? There is a chapter on that in the book actually that okay. covers it. Like, okay, well, if I'm masculine, then why shouldn't I just amplify that? It's my strength after all. And the way I look at it, it is your strength. Mm -hmm. It's not about becoming feminine. 
You're not going to become feminine. Your strength right. will always be your strength, and you have to use it because it's sort of like the magic ingredient that you have in yeah. yourself. You have to use it. But you cannot be ignorant to the fact that if you're not using your feminine energy, which you do have, everyone has both. Let's just mm -hmm. you know start kind of with that. It's not about black and white. Nobody's just masculine or feminine. We we'll, right. we'll all have both. But if you're not using the other capacity yeah. of the other energy that has so many gifts, then you're missing out on certain aspects of your inner world that right. can be your outer world. So you can still be in business, you, sh you can still play basketball and jiu-jitsu or whatever, but it's about looking at other areas in your life that are missing out on the fact that you're not using your feminine yeah. energy. It could be relationships, it could be your own relation with yourself or connecting to other people, feeling empathy, love, you know, there's many different aspects of um, mm -hmm. missing out on feminine energy if you, if you don't develop it within yourself. So if somebody's watching this, you're watching dating or you're married or you're in a relationship yep. or you're thinking of getting in a relationship, how does this help you? Because one of the things that you said, if I remember right, yes. is that a lot of times, opposite, a lot of opposites attract. Yeah. Do you think that's good that a masculine person date more feminine? Absolutely. You know how people say opposites attract? Yes. Usually when they say that, I think most of us think of opposite personalities. But that doesn't make sense. If you're an extrovert and you like to be out and travel and your partner is an introvert, doesn't want to go out, doesn't want to travel, doesn't want to do anything you want to do, eventually you're going to have some kind of a conflict because right. you're going to want to get yeah. out constantly and that person will be like I want to stay home I don't want to do what you're doing yeah so it might work in um, in a short period of time but it's not sustainable relationship yeah. or it will be a relationship but it just won't be a happy one yeah but when people say opposites attract I think what they really mean is that opposite energies yeah and the reason we attract it's like a magnet if you're gonna have the same magnet of the same energy, it's like it repels. Pushes apart, yeah. But if it's the separate, you have the minus and the plus, it's like it just gravitates towards each other. And the reason that we gravitate towards the opposite energy is because you're missing certain qualities or you, you, don't, you haven't developed certain qualities, you see it in another person, and it's like a mirror. Mm -hmm. When I'm around you, you bring out more of the masculine, mm -hmm. for example, right? If I'm a feminine female, and I'm around you, I look at you and you're so strong, you're so confident, you're so determined, it just rubs off on me. But then I'm so sweet and gentle and kind, and that rubs off on you. Yeah. And what happens is that you become really balanced as you're in that. As a relationship. Opposite relationship. You think the same applies to business partners? Absolutely, yeah. 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 So almost all friendships, all business partnerships, yeah. love. Yeah. Now you're married. Yes. And you're re do you consider yourself as a woman more masculine or more feminine? So I am a masculine strength woman. So the reason I call it strength is because whatever your energy is that is the dominant energy in you, it truly really is your strength. Yeah. Like we discussed earlier right now, um, it's not something to ignore and neglect. It's not about trying to be something you're not now. Like, okay, this is my strength, I'm gonna try to be feminine. No, this is the strength and you can't ignore it. If that's your strength, you have to use it. For you, like you said, you're also masculine. So you're using that skill by you know, doing business, being out there, leading, inspiring people, because that comes easy to you, it's so natural. So in my relationship, I'm the masculine strength female. However, I, I feel like I'm quite balanced now. It's been something that I've so been working on. So you worked on it to balance yourself. Co constantly, but at the same time. What have you done to make yourself, because you're a female, yeah. how do you become more feminine as a female? Because oh, you're all right. Because you have a, for those of you, um, just hearing about me, 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 they have luxy hair, which is a, um, sells all kinds of hair accessories and all kinds of stuff. And they, um, you've got a business, you and your husband with journals, mm -hmm. five minute journal and productivity, productivity planner. So you guys are kind of serial entrepreneurs mm -hmm. already, which is masculine. What do you do to be more feminine? I take the creative part of the business and mm -hmm. I do that. It's not that I can't do the masculine side of the business, so basically the production and the books and all that other stuff, I could do it. I just don't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So we have, um, we have negotiated that I get to do the creative side. You that, and your husband, Alex? Yeah, okay. Alex and I, um, because he's the opposite of me. He's the feminine strength male. It just works so effortlessly. He takes yeah. over things that actually bring out the masculine out of him. 
and I take over the creative side. So I do the videos, the Instagram, um, all the creative words that, you know, I'm part of. So I'm you actually do the, the opposite. When you're masculine, you'll do the feminine parts. When Alex is feminine, you'll put him in charge of the masculine stuff. Exactly. And that's like just, just like bodybuilding. It's like strengthening Absolutely. the muscle. Yeah. It's hard for you to lift it, but over time the muscle grows and accommodates. You know, and you feel exercise. better. You feel better because you feel more balanced. Do you think you make that. more money uh, from understanding bingo theory? Absolutely. You just, because when you're happier internally, I think that's the first thing that happens when you understand the concept of balancing the energies inside of you that both, all of us have. You're a happier person than that comes out on the outside. When you're happier, you just do better in business, you have better relationship with your partner, with your family, with your audience, whatever it is that you're doing, you just, you just exude that amazing energy because you, you, you're balanced. It's sort of like becoming, and I, I mean, I call it the bingo because it's like, you know, when you play the bingo, <laughs> the game, and you get that winning combination, it's like bingo, like you, right. you win, but you want, it's essentially you become that winning combination in life. Everyone is drawn to you, everyone's attracted to you, you're like the winner. Everyone oh. wants to be that. It's like, you know, when guys are attracted to a girl and they say, you know, she's a 10. Right. Basically, right. that's what, you know, a lot that's of boys will relate to. That's the goal. That's the goal. You know, well, and women, they, they, they might not say perfect 10, they say something like that. You know, Prince Charming, whatever yeah. it is, yeah. <laughs> now, one thing I found that's interesting, there's a book called Compelling People. It's a mm -hmm. book by these two Harvard guys, and they, what their point of the book pretty much backs up what you're saying. Oh, cool. So they're scientists and they say, when you study powerful people, compelling people, yep. presidents, public speakers, there's a magic, it's actually funny, you should read that, but I don't yeah. even think you read yeah, that book. Yeah, I will, I haven't. Yeah. But they don't call it bingo, but yeah. he calls it this magical formula that almost nobody has. Interesting. Which is strength and warmth. But and that's exactly yes. what it is. He said the perfect, person to model yourself after is Oprah Winfrey because Oprah bingo, Winfrey yeah. is a is a bingo absolutely in your theory because yeah. Yeah. they are she is strong she's like a, sometimes she'll call master, people out yeah. yeah but she has a show about helping mm -hmm. people get out of debt and relationships and she can and give she's things. very vulnerable yes soul, you know? and she knows Bill Clinton is another person and that's yeah. why Hillary Clinton has always struggled in the polls compared to her husband because she's Bill is strong. You know he's yeah. like intelligence is I think in more considered Absolutely. masculine, right? Yeah, it's the like logic part. Absolutely. Yeah. So he's logical, he has a great memory, he was a Rhodes scholar, but he's also could Very tell weird. jokes, yeah. funny, make the whole whereas Hillary Clinton is extremely competent. Uh, Very reserved, more like Yeah, but she doesn't have any feminine. She's quite masculine. Well I shouldn't say she doesn't have any Everyone feminine. Has. But people don't perceive her as yeah. having feminine. Yeah. Yeah. And so she's so strong that people get intimidated. And that's the reason why it's so important to balance. Yeah. What would you say Donald Trump is? <laughs> God. Um, he seems pretty masculine. He says whatever he wants. Maybe I think he's, he's, he's probably masculine. Yeah, yeah. He's a masculine strength male for sure. Yeah. yeah. Because he's so... I mean, for somebody to get to that level of monetary success, you have to be driven right. by... By certain things that feminine energy probably wouldn't be driven by. Do you think so? There's about depending on how you count, nobody knows exact number, but there's six to eight hundred billionaires, self-made yep. billionaires in the world, and it's predominantly male. Now, some of that is because of society and mm -hmm. discrimination and oppression. Do you oppression and lack of opportunities for women? Do you think any of that has to do with this book, Bingo Theory, that women are maybe smarter than men? They make enough money, and they're like. I just want to live a great life. I don't need to have, you know, nine, uh, six zeros, nine, a three comma club, they call it, nine zeros. Or do, so do you think maybe women, by having the fem feminine side, are more enlightened than men? Because sometimes men just chase money till they die of a heart attack at 40. Whereas women are more care concerned about, I also want to have a family. Mm -hmm. I also want to be happy. I yeah. want to take a vacation. Yeah. You're onto something, for yeah. sure. So as a, as a female, if you're a feminine female, usually you are not really driven by success and yes. money. It's just not your nature. You're more driven by purpose and um, by love and compassion and all these noble things. Yeah. Um, 
as a masculine female, you could be driven by status and the money and um, you know success, of course. And I believe the reason there's not as many females, female entrepreneurs or billionaires out there in the world is because we're just going through evolution. Uh -huh. I think people are, whether through this book or any other book that's out there, this is, I'm sure this information is out there, just in other forms. Um, the more women become aware of this power they have, yeah. they will also evolve. More. So as a woman balances, if she's super feminine, wasn't as interested in yeah. business and finance and making money, as you balance or, yeah. or they balance themselves out, they'll become more financially be, successful. They'll be more driven yeah. to go after Because you can't be, one thing I interviewed Larry King, that, and he, I said, Larry, you've met presidents and you've interviewed, based here in the Guinness Book of World Records for the most celebrity and powerful people interviews. And I said, what's the one thing that powerful people have? And he mm -hmm. said, easy, drive. Right. And that's that masculine that's side. That's absolutely the masculine That's what quality. makes you call, you know, Alexander the Great, masculine. The Michael Jordan, yeah. you know, masculine. Yeah. Now, how does somebody, if you're watching this and you're advising them, how does somebody figure out what they are? Because I've found people often miscategorize themselves. Well, the book will offer a quiz that actually will be on the website as well. So, yeah, we'll, we'll put a, what's the yeah. website again? It's the bingotheory.com. The bingo, bingo theory. theory. We'll put a link. So, the quiz will be yeah. available for everyone to take um, so they can figure out what is their strength. Because that's the most important thing. Once you know what's your strength, you're like, okay, I don't need to do more of this yeah. to amplify that energy inside of me. Now I just have to figure out what the weak energy is inside of me and bring that up so yeah. I balance. Um, but there's several things. One of the things that you actually told me in the first meeting, this was over dinner in London like two and a half years ago, when we first talked about the bingo theory, you told me about the finger test. Yes. If you remember this. Yes. So that's in the book in, as well. Oh, you put it yeah, in there. It's in there with nice illustrations. I got a small contribution. <laughs> yeah, you're actually in the acknowledgments too. Oh, you can check it out. Thank you. That's nice. <laughs> but of you. Um, yeah, so there's a finger test because, as you said, um, yes. you know the the. Let me see yours again. The fourth finger is the indication of testosterone, yeah. and the index finger is the indication. Oh of yeah, you have. I can yeah. see from here. Yeah. Wow. Well, Yes. I know. And what, so this is a <laughs> test. I have the oh, most. Wow. I've tested every single guy I've ever met. I think I have the most. I've never seen it that. Mine way. goes like half an inch below my cuticle. Wow. It's yeah, crazy. That's a lot of my friend. One of my best friends. It's funny. He actually looks like you, Alex. You're a, he, his fingers are the opposite. Yeah. And when we were about, I'll never forget. We were in San Diego in Tierra Santa walking from the park playing basketball and I was we were both I'd say 16 and I said um we were talking about girls some girls walk by that are pretty and he goes to Ty all I want to do is just find that one woman and just fall in love and be happily <laughs> ever after and I remember being like what? what you see all those women out there like I want to try to go after all of them and um he did he married the first girl that he ever dated Oh. And and he's uh, but he's very feminine. Yeah. So the index finger. Oh, his okay. index finger is. So Alex's is, is complete opposite. Is it opposite actually looks is. exactly like mine, but reverse. <laughs> what happens is in and this is real science. BBC has a yeah. great article that when you're in the womb in your mom's belly, yeah. there's a time where testosterone is basically released all at once, and some people are exposed to tons of testosterone. Yeah. Some people are, and that's why. You can't categorize. There's some feminine yeah. Yeah. men and some. Ma Look at Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey, the UFC fighter. Uh, I was talking to um, Henry Gracie, who trains me, and he said she is the best athlete he's ever trained, uh -huh. male or female. Uh -huh. So let, let me ask you that. That kind of leads into the next question. All right. What if you don't like what you are? I mean, that's a bit of a problem because in order for you to grow as a human, you yeah. have to accept what you are. And in my experience, telling this theory to people that I meet, mm. usually the ones that have a problem with it are masculine, either ma females or males. Really? Yeah. I, not me. Can you guess why? Not I'm masculine. masculine. I'm like, I know. You were very open and yeah. you were an exception. Same with my friend UJ, for example. 
if because you're more evolved, you're more balanced. Okay. Right? If you're not balanced and you're super masculine, you're like feminine. There's no feminine in me. Uh, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, but that is the problem because unless you accept it, you cannot really bring more out of that. Right. And you might continue suffering until you come to a point where you're like, well, feminine is just the right side of my brain. It's the expression, it's the love, it's the connection. It's all these things that are here, but I'm just not express, expressing in my life. Yeah. And by not expressing it, the only person that's suffering is really you. So, yeah, and if you're watching, if you are masculine, you want to make money and be an entrepreneur and all that, if you study the great ones, mm -hmm. they definitely had masculine. They definitely had the bingo theory. Like Absolutely. Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, they could, especially Steve Jobs was naturally more feminine, I would say. I don't know what you'd say. Bill Gates was more masculine, but Warren Buffett is like very blended of both. He's mm -hmm. funny. Yeah. He's witty. We've been joined by Alex, Mimi's husband. And... Uh, I want to ask you guys a question because we've been talking about the book, The Bingo Theory, how you guys balance out your relationship, your business. Let's talk about, we were talking yesterday, how you met UJ or back when you met UJ, you were talking about lifestyle businesses. That's one of uh, Alex's business partner, your guy's business partner wanted to meet you, but you guys were in France unavailable because you had such a great lifestyle. You were making money and nobody could reach you, which is a lot of people's dream. Is it just disappear, take a year off, no weight on their shoulders, money coming in, and you guys have set up a business. Uh, I don't know if do you guys share your numbers or? Uh, we were pretty, we, the way, what we share is that we're seven figure business, seven figure profits. Yeah. Seven uh, figure profits, so over a million dollar profit per year. And in, in seven figures. So I'm in not saying it's not. Could be 1.1 million or 9,999,000 of profit. Yeah. We'll never know. Um, with that business model, mm -hmm. tell people it's because it's not just how much money you make, it's how you make of it. Course. How many trips have you guys been on in the last 12 months, would you say? Gosh. Name some of the and we spots. Don't, we, we, we don't even try that hard anymore. Like right. it's, we don't, because it's, when we first started doing the lifestyle, that's when we were really intrigued by the whole, mm -hmm. you know, we read the four hour work, we like, we want to live this lifestyle. They're like we hungry to travel. We're hungry to travel, and that's what we did. After two to three re years, we realized it's not really for us. We just still travel because now we live in London, mm -hmm. and we positioned ourselves to allow us to still travel more on the weekends. Because we now, actually, we love to work. So, like, we're like, the whole lifestyle thing, I think it's one of the biggest misconceptions for a lot of people. A lot of people want the dream, they want the lifestyle, like we did. But what we realized for ourselves is the work, the actually building of the business is actually can be one of the most exciting, fulfilling things ever. Yeah. So what we do now, we mix it. So we, we work most of the Monday to Fridays and we live in London so that we can, people, we have this image. Every time somebody meets us, they're like, oh, where are you off to traveling? But in reality, we actually work most of the week. Sometimes we'll just, yeah, we'll jet off maybe on a Friday. Yeah. Like last week, we left on a Friday to Sicily and then we came back Monday, yeah. right? So it was, we just had an extended long weekend, but we still had that lifestyle and the ability to do that if we wanted to. But, and I think yeah. the, the important thing to point out is that we tried it. And, yeah. you know, you have to try it out. We did yeah. it for two years. We lived in Costa Rica. We lived in South of France. We lived in California. We lived <laughs> yeah. in many different places for like long periods of time. We'll go somewhere for like a month and just like settle down there. But it just didn't work for us. We realized that we prefer to have one base because it just mentally it works better for us. We can be more focused on what we're doing. And we're just happier to have a place where it's at our base and like we have our roots there. And then we take shorter trips with purpose, as opposed to just like mindlessly traveling. This, by the way, is something I've been talking about for years. I've been telling people, yeah. and that's actually when we first met, mm -hmm. we connected around yeah. the subject You're because right. some people, it's very easy as an entrepreneur to take it too extreme and just set up your life where you don't have a house and you travel yeah. from place to place, but then your business suffers. Yeah. And a lot of times, mm -hmm. not just your business, Absolutely. but your life suffers. Yeah. Your so that what you want to do is actually, I like how you guys said it, structured yeah. uh, a structure to life that's not too constricting like the average person if you're watching this and you have a nine-to-five job it's too constricting you like mm -hmm. if you want to take one day off you have yeah. to ask permission and then this and and you can only work from a cubicle let's say if you're you know that the average American job you know what the number one American job is customers call center, call center rep 
So most people wake up, they gotta be at the, they leave at seven, drive, get there at eight, sit in a cubicle, make phone calls, get a week of vacation plus some sick days. And it's so over, it's actually like your book, The Bingo Theory, it's an imbalanced life. It is. Mm. But other people go to the other extreme, yeah. which is like, Truly I'm sure. like, where do you live, dude? Where do you put your socks and shoes? Yeah. And if you're living out of a suitcase, that gets old fast. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. We've been there, so, yeah. and I think for us, what we realized most importantly, we literally, and we shared this public as well, after two to three years, we've admitted to ourselves that it was depressing. Yeah. yeah. Literally, like, I we got were depressed pretty like, fast, yeah. actually. And, yeah. It took and, him about a year and a half and getting his dream car. For me, it was quite fast. Yeah, for me, because <laughs> it, it all started, like, when we started our business, we became profitable right away. We did a million in our first year. Yeah. So, um, it was very quickly how everything evolved. And you went, you were making, before that, you just worked at a bank. Yeah. No, yeah. We, you got we, fired we were, from we were the bank, unemployed. right? We were yeah. unemployed for almost two years. Did you both work at the same bank? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's how we met. How we met. So, what were, you, were you bank tellers? Uh, me, was I was a teller. branch bank teller, then I was like a branch ambassador, so like okay. meeting people. And, yeah, I, I and saw, then Alex was a personal bank. But it wasn't a high level job. No, 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 no like no, president like of Bank of America. Yeah. Like at the local. Yeah, like a retail level. Yeah, yeah. retail level. So, so you're making 40, 50 grand a year. Not even. It was yeah. like I was 30 grand. Yeah. Something. So better. you went from 30 grand to a mill. Yeah. How did that feel? Well, I think, like I said, for Mimi, she felt like it's a millionaire a right away. Um, she felt like a millionaire right away, and you did it. No, because because to me, I think when you're starting a business, I think maybe it just you still want to know, like, okay, is this for real? Like, yeah. how long is this is this gonna last? Like, yes. I need to. Is this maybe seasonal? Are we just getting lucky here? Is, is there a consistency in the business? Yeah. Um, and how long can we ride this for? So you were a little more nervous about this, yeah. <laughs> which is a skeptical. more fe- is that's a little. Would you say that's the more feminine? <laughs> Yeah, because I was masculine or like optimist. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, oh, that's it. Like, that's yeah. it. I'm good. Now it's up to me to continue this if I want to. <laughs> yeah. But like, I made it. Yeah. Kind of felt that confidence because you see that people respond well to you and you know that you can do great things with it if you want to, of course. Um, but for, with Alex, he was a bit more like, well, I don't know. Let's see how this goes. And exactly. And I just wanted to really months, see. Yeah. And I still had a certain goal and, you know, figure it to reach in a bank account. Yeah. Where it's like, because the thing with business, a lot of people don't talk about, it's like, there's a lot of million dollar businesses, but how much are you actually making and netting? And that's why I yeah. say we're making seven figure profits. Yes. That's a huge difference. Yeah. There's, I know a lot of, I used to be part of EO, Entrepreneurs Organization, where it's entrepreneurs that make, uh, they have million dollar businesses. But there's so many people in there who are making like 40 grand. Yeah. And like, because it doesn't like, you can be make, that's, that's one of the biggest misconceptions in business is like, just because you have a seven figure business business doesn't mean you're actually making millions or have a million cash in your bank account. Yeah. To get a million cash in your bank account, you have to make a lot of money because there's taxes, uh, employees, all that stuff that goes out. To actually net after that a million yeah. to have in your bank account, that's a huge that's difference. An so for me, really, I, I'm like, I kind of set a number, okay, we have to reach a certain number where I feel like it's set. Yeah. And for me, like once I had a certain number, and once I had the, my dream car that I wanted, what was the dream car? It wasn't. It wasn't as fancy as you. I didn't want a Ferrari. No, it's fine. Like no, it but <laughs> for me, I just wanted a three series convertible hardtop. Okay. And yeah. I was like, if I, I'm like, I just because we used to literally we would talk like we would want this car. Visualize. What car, car did you want? Did you want the same car? Like okay. the same. same car. So we got that car, and as soon as we got the car and the money, I was like, this is depressing. And so for that's when we really changed our mindset with. It. Cause, and that's why Mimi is saying that it's important to actually travel yeah. and to yeah. actually strive to get do it that. out of your system. Get it out of your system. Do it. Go yeah. full in. You know, you I want did the same s- thing. Yeah. 40, 50 countries later, I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I still like to travel, yeah. but I like structured travel. Yeah. And yeah. I, I like traveling. One thing I've found is if you have a purpose to what you're oh. doing in your business, then you, it's kind of like you travel here yeah. to London. Yeah. I mean, from London and you're, you're here at my house. You're also going to this mastermind. Yeah. So you're getting the full travel experience, yeah. like you guys went to Santa Monica and yeah. blah, 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 but you're not just doing tourist spots. Exactly. Most yeah. tourists, I'm like, <laughs> you know that you're going to places that nobody in LA goes to. <laughs> I remember I was in New Zealand, oh, funny story. See, I'll never forget that I was in New Zealand and there was a, I was just in this one historic area uh-huh. eating and there's. I won't say what country because it's stereotypical who takes a lot of pictures and the group it was a bus came from that country people got out at a tripod set up cameras this dude spent 10 to 15 minutes setting up tripods and i'm thinking 
what it, and I couldn't see what he was gonna do a picture of. I'm like, what is he taking a picture of? And I kid you not, it was a statue. Now, if you don't know, you don't need a tripod for a statue because a statue doesn't move. <laughs> and it was like some New Zealand random, like the 1953 ambassador to Tahiti. And this dude, and I remember thinking, that's not a real travel experience. Mm -hmm. To travel New Zealand is to, I did this. I worked at some farms mm. in New Zealand. You know, I like, exactly. With the, yeah. with the people. Well, how do you guys do that now? Like when you went to Sicily or do you try to find some friends you already know or when you go to Spain or this kind of stuff? Friends is the best way. Yeah. And that's why, you know, we're here in LA, we're staying with you. With you. This is the great, the best way to integrate into the culture, to find really cool spots in the yeah. city. Um, so we do that a lot because we travel a lot. We've made a lot of friends over time. A lot of them are also entrepreneurs. So we have a lot in common and it's just a different kind of experience you get when you're traveling that way. It's not always 90, it, yeah. I would say it's 80 to 90% though. But we also, that kind of for example, for Mimi has a channel and she'll film like a say a vlog mm -hmm. for, for our trip. And that also forces us to go out and try to find new experiences. Yeah. Last time we were yeah. in Sicily last weekend, I was just filming this. this Famous cannoli guy. He makes this cannoli. He made uh, like a thousand cannolis for Bill Clinton. And then you come in, and you come in, and there's literally a handwritten uh, no, thank you no, card no, from Bill Clinton, and it says like, "Bill Clinton, thank you so much for this making cannolis." Good marketing. <laughs> and I just I filmed him last week, and he's like, he saw us filming. He's like, "Come in." He's like, "Come to the back." And he takes us to the yeah, back. He let us into he's the like, kitchen. he's like, he shows us how to do it, and he's he's so proud. He's like, I made Bill Clinton cannolis, but it was just. But when you are kind of filming and doing something that's beyond just for you, because yeah. that's what we do when we yeah. film. We're not just filming for ourselves. It's not just for our family home video. Yeah. We were like, we know we're filming for our channel. And all of a sudden, a lot of doors open up, mm -hmm. right? People yeah. are like, yeah, come, do this, do this. I'll show you that. And so I, I think that's like, you, you na nailed it. I think, and that's what we realized for ourselves, not only to travel with purpose, yeah. but also to have a business with purpose. Yeah. So for us as well, it's like we had to then, and a lot of times I think, a lot of times don't even see the purpose of their business. Yeah. I mean, even for ourselves, we then actually had to start thinking, okay, what do, why are we doing what we're doing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is there purpose involved in our business? And all of a sudden, you actually start seeing the, the purpose you do in your business. Because a lot of times, if you're making money, you're delivering value to people. Right, you're helping people. Yeah, you're helping yeah. people. But a lot of people don't see that because like mm -hmm. we were, I'll be honest at the beginning, at the beginning it was just about money because we come from nothing. Yeah. So at the, at the beginning it was just money, but once you have money, you're like, okay, what's mm -hmm. the point? Yeah. And then you start seeing, the important thing is to start gaining that awareness and start seeing why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I making money? What people am I affecting? How can I positively affect these people? And all of a sudden, once you start having these whys in your business, then it allows you, number one, you actually won't feel depressed mm -hmm. because you have purpose and drive and just what you do. That's why you get excited to come to the office. Like my favorite day of the week is Monday, mm -hmm. like hands down. Like you even said, like we, we flew in here on Friday night and we came into your office. Ty was still there, like, I don't know, it was like 10, 11. And I'm like, Ty, why are you working so late? He's like, I'm not, what did you I'm say? I'm not working. Yeah. I'm not working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's, that's exactly what, how we but feel. That's exactly how we feel. And, and Ty was on there, you know, you did the, the little mastermind thing you were doing. And Ty was only supposed to be there until 9.30. He went there, you went out until like 2, 1 a.m. Yeah. Exactly. But, right. but Mimi and I were laughing because we're like, that's we what we it. would do. Because yeah. yeah. I remember we were in New York, we did a meetup, we're, like, we're only gonna do this for an hour. We're there for like three and a half hours later. Because yeah. it's not that we're there because we're, it's sometimes we're for the money, we're there because we want to give people the best experience. Yeah. And I, I, I remember when we flew on Friday, we felt the same thing. And I think the most important thing that I'm trying to really say to your people is that it's very important to reposition your thinking about business, mm -hmm. what you do, mm -hmm. about how can you align it with your purpose. Because once you do that, making money becomes way easier and it yeah. also feels so much better for you what you're doing yeah okay. let me let me ask a cool thing that you have here um alex uj do you have the productivity word i saw that productivity planner planner yes. yeah it's yeah. outside i think can do you, you grab, grab it outside it? Yeah. Uh, yeah yeah thank you so i'm gonna put it, two links one is to productivity planner and one is to the um the, what's five the, minute journal? the five minute journal and the five minute journal is something you use that you recommend people use yeah. to create happiness, gratitude, mm 
the conditioning you and want. then the productivity planner is based around you were telling me a cool story um, on the theory and, and we'll I'm gonna come back around I'm actually gonna have Andrew who works with me interview for you for a second on that because that's one of the most common questions and the most popular things I can talk about is how to be more productive in daily routine. I mean, mm. people will watch those videos and I realize why. All of us can look back at our lives and be like, I could have done yep. twice as much in half the time. Mm -hmm. And that's my kind of mantra for my own brain. It's like, how can I do twice as much yeah. with half the effort? Yeah. So that's like the proverbial, have your cake and eat it too. Because a lot of people think, I want more money. But then they go, oh, but that means I have to work yeah. 80 hours a week. Yeah. No, the goal is you're working 40, you're making this much. How can you work 20 and make double? And I see that with your body. I see that with every yep. part of your happiness. So I, I want him to talk about one, then we we'll bring that the back 80, in. 80-20. 80 20 always is. Yeah. Pareto's law. Well. Yeah. Yep. Mimi, this was amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Now you can follow Truly Mimi. She has a huge Instagram, like a million or almost a is it a million? It's about that. Almost a million people. Huge. How many YouTube subscribers do you have? I think it's a, at about a... I, I honestly don't really pay that close of attention, so I'm yeah. not like focused on the numbers too much, but I think it's about half a million right now. Yeah, half a million it's YouTube It's about the engagement, no. not the subscribers. That's right. <laughs> Very engaged. Yeah. And so I'm gonna put, we're going to put a link here. Highly recommend you take the quiz. Take the... Buy the book. Obviously, you want to buy the book because I love books, so I'm good at recommending books. And uh, then we'll also put, I want to put a little okay. special link for the quiz. I'm going to come up with it. And then maybe I'll share what I get on it. Yeah. I people want always it. want to know, what's, what's your personality, dude? So click the link, look for it, look for it on Amazon, uh, and also look for it. I would, I would, the way I would do it, here's the order I recommend. The second you hear of a good book, trust me on this. I practice what I preach. Buy it instantly. Now I have a butler guy that runs my house and he stopped asking me about a year ago whether to buy books. Why? Because he'd be like, I heard this might be a good book. I'm like, buy it. <laughs> He's like, don't you want to know the name? I'm like, no. The risk return ratio on yeah. books are so, look, this book, whatever it is, whether it's, I'm not sure the exact price it's going to be, but let's say it's, well, if you put this in action, for you guys, it's been a thousand X return. And it's very actionable. There's a lot yeah. of practical advice that you can take to actually improve and balance your life. There's so a cool thing about measuring enough. your fingers yeah. in here too. Make sure you take that. So click the link, then reach out to uh, Mimi, reach out to myself, tell me what your personality type is. And to end this video, leave a, I want to do a survey in the comments below. Yeah, that would be cool. What do you think, before you take this, leave a comment, do you think you're more masculine or more feminine and why? Then, once you take the quiz and read the book, come back and re-comment on this video. Let's see if it changes, because trust me, That's people don't know themselves. Mm -hmm. Before I knew about personality types, I used to think I was this dude over here, and these things bring you back to reality. They're mm -hmm. kind of like a good, I don't know, a wake up call. Putting a mirror in front of yourself and looking at it and facing what you see. Exactly. So thanks so much and uh, Thank you for having click me. the link.